Welcome, welcome everyone. It's episode three of the Simon Dan podcast. I'm absolutely delighted you can join us once again. I hope you've enjoyed the first two episodes. Um, we've had a lot of fun making them. Uh, so once again, the main man himself joins me today. He loves to wear his slippers on the school run. It's Cats. Welcome, buddy. How you doing? I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. I'm really looking forward to this one today, actually. Uh, very much yes. looking forward to it. So yes, thanks for having too. us back. Oh, you, as I said, you're an Everlord co-host, apart from the times where you can't make it. But uh, yeah, so far, so good. Anyway, I'm doing it. Any, anyway, any, any Flat Earth news to catch up on? Have we got anything? Uh, not, for, not for me. No, I've not seen any spectacular evidence of uh, of, of water not being able to bend or, or no, yeah, pressure gradients not existing yet. No, no. It's, I mean, I, mean it, I, I found this actually recently that they're they're genuinely running out of arguments. Do you not? Do you not think that? Like, that it's, I'm, I find myself going over the same thing over and over now. Yeah, I'm, I'm exactly the same. I think the the thing is there are so many limited misunderstandings they can have and there's only so many times that they can be corrected upon them that it becomes dull you know really yeah. really like yeah, just treading on the same ground it over does. and over yeah i'm trying to i'm trying i'm trying to get excited when i'm trying to go through things but it's generally like the 50th time i've done it anyway so it's something that they they would definitely refute is the iss uh, did you know last month it was tw- it's been 20 years since the iss has been continually occupied You'd see that on the news. It's inc- and it's incredible, isn't it? You yeah. Know, I think about the number of people who've been on there and uh, what a feat of engineering that was. It's in- incredible. And it gave me a bit of an idea. And I don't know if we could do it for the podcast. And we'll, we'll chat with our guest in a minute. He might have an insight in it. But um, I I know of people who have radioed, have, have radioed people on the ISS as it's come by. Do you reckon we could do that for an episode? Do you reckon we could, like get in contact with the right people and tr- see if we can record us chatting with someone on the ISS. Do you reckon that's possible? Or am I, am I in fantasy land? No, I'll, um, I'll just pull some of my strings uh, yeah. with my colleagues at NASA, mate, <laughs> and uh, that won't be a problem at all, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure I can sort that for you. Yeah, okay. Well, maybe not then. But uh, I've definitely heard of someone doing it, 100%. They've definitely done it. I think school kids did it once, I'm sure of it. And uh, they, they kind of like chatted for like 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, that'd be incredible if you could do that. And then I'm sure the flat earthers will come out in, in force then to uh, debunk us. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, yeah. I, can't, I can't see that. No, no. <laughs> anyway, let's bring on our guest. Um, so joining this week is the creator of the brilliant Action Lab YouTube channel where he conducts all sorts of interesting experiments. They're, they're, honestly, they're brilliant. Uh, he's a full-time engineer with a chemistry background. It's James from Action Lab. Welcome to you, good sir. How are you doing? Hey, thanks. Thank nice you. to meet you. Nice to talk to you both. Same. Thank you very, thank you very much for joining us. Um, so your YouTube channel and by extension your Facebook. Like I was just talking to cats before we came on. When I'm scrolling through Facebook, your videos come up every ten posts. So it's probably my fault <laughs> for know, watching hopefully, them. Hopefully, it's not too <laughs> yeah. annoying. No, no, some no, pe- no. Some people message me on Facebook. They're like, I don't want to watch your videos, and I'm like, I don't determine oh, no. facebook shows my videos well it's it's, so. it's partly my fault for watching them so i watched them and obviously the facebook will show it to me again but how how are you finding how are you find, finding the whole youtube thing how did it how did it get going that that particular thing it's just kind of a thing that happened i never expected this at all in my life i was an engineer i got my bachelor's and my phd in chemical engineering wanted to be an engineer went to work after school and then just my brother had a vlogging channel and he kind of was like, you should do a science channel. And I was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> and then I'm like, I'm not a YouTube personality. I don't think so. And then I just decided to just go for it and try it. But I didn't start out as a science channel. Cause I was like, it's hard to have a science channel blow up and go viral. And so I started uh, doing hydraulic press videos Oh, when, nice! When, a few years ago when hydraulic press was the big thing to do. Yeah. And there was the, the one main popular channel, the hydraulic press channel. I was yeah. like, I'm just going to do that. Good. I know that's going to get up in the searches, but I would talk about science of the thing I'm crushing. And so it kind of made it exciting and fun to watch, but still snuck some science in there. And then, <clears throat> and then as that kind of started to go away, I was like, I better morph my channel to not be just a hydraulic press channel. And I like science anyways. And so it was actually a little, when I was just the 
hydraulic press. I'm like, I can't do this for much longer. <laughs> but when it turned into science, I was like, I, this is what I really like doing. So and, and that's I'm glad, when it, it's, I'm uh, glad it stayed popular after that and yeah. continued to grow. And, and is that when it became Action Lab after that? Was it, was it, did you have yeah, it, yeah, it was actually hydraulic press action. Oh, okay. And so I was like, I'm going to try to keep action in the name, but I want it science-y. So, I mean, the videos have always been science-y. It's just um, I used to just crush stuff before because that's what got views. And so I, then I reali- then I kind of went out on a limb. I'm like, if I don't crush something, will, it, will people still watch it? And, and so then it kind of got into like a vacuum chamber craze. I did so many vacuum chamber videos yeah. because... I don't know. I, it's, it just every I, I do a video that didn't have a vacuum chamber in it and like no views. I'm like, all right, here comes the vacuum chamber again. Yeah. So they, I mean, they're interesting. The, the vacuum chambers. Well. Yeah, you've got- and those have kind of died out too. But there's yeah. still. It's just there's so many experiments because that's what was fun about the vacuum chamber experiments. Is just there are so many things you can do just to see what would happen in a, a space type environment. And there's so many fun things to do. So those were really fun Absolutely. to do. And I still do them every once in a while now. Yeah, and we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, one, yeah. of the, one of the best things I've seen you do is uh, the mock-up of how the gravity works on a, on a neutron star. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm assuming, have you seen that one, Katz? I have, yeah. It's yeah. brilliant, yeah. yeah I'm, brilliant. I'm assuming that you use some sort of magnet for that. How did you, how did I, you do that? I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used a magnet. That one's so funny because... For, first of all, I have to give credit to the book "What If." I like I, yeah. all I did was I read that book. I loved it. Do you? I don't know if you guys know that book by Randall Monroe. I know a bit, but I haven't read it. Yeah. What if? You, you need to read it. It's awesome. He he's a, an awesome explainer of things. But he has a part in that that talks about like what would it be like to get close to let's say a drop of a neutron star, like mainly focusing on how it would affect gravity near you. Yeah. Like obviously, you can't just have a bear. Yeah. <laughs> a chunk of neutrons that, that that would work and so so I was like well that's cool to read about it but I want to like show what it would be like even though I'm not like a graphics artist or anything I was like I'm just gonna like act it out what it would be like yeah and I didn't know like I tried to use language throughout it like I'm using my magic table and I'm gonna magically increase the density but apparently that didn't tip people off that I'm doing a demonstration and I don't really have a drop of a neutron star because <laughs> people are like still get I still get messages they like where can I buy a drop oh, of a no neutron way. star and I'm like <laughs> come on <laughs> I'm like watch some more of my videos <laughs> maybe I that's don't brilliant know. That is- yeah but that one was fun to do to just kind of show what it would be like so I did use to in to increase the density on the scale I had I have a giant neodymium magnet yeah. So it was well below it, but it could still pull down and push the weight down and everything. Yeah. So, so. Did, how hard was it genuinely to lift those things off the table? Were you were you making it out to be a bit harder than it was, or were you genuinely? Oh no! Boom. Like when I when I have my magnet that I have my big one, it's a a thousand pound pull force. So meaning wow. when it's fully saturated with iron on top yeah. of it, it's a thousand pounds to pry it off of there. And so even if you have a small chunk, uh, especially of another neodymium magnet on top of it it's like pushing into your hand like solid and so it weighs uh, I, I, it's hard to weigh it because the it it um messes with the scale that's why i use an yeah. analog scale in there um but yeah it's it was heavy there was a bit of acting yeah but also <laughs> especially when i made it go through the table that yeah. people were like okay that's when it threw me off that this wasn't real when i saw it shoot down through yeah. the earth <laughs> well i thought it, it was brilliant what, what about you cats have you got a, a favorite video of this um yeah i think favorite video i've got to go back to the uh the vacuum chamber ones and uh the the fly can a fly fly in a vacuum chamber nice um yeah. and i don't know why that that stuck in my head and that was one that i showed to the kids at school when we were teaching science and again that was a, a momentum lesson um and i'm not quite sure how i managed to weave that into momentum but uh um, yeah <laughs> it was it was it was great it was absolutely great the kids the kids were stunned you know if like days afterwards they'd be coming to me and like do you think he killed the fly? Like, I was like, no, I think the fly was all right at the end. Yeah, yeah that one is a, that's a scary one to do in, on the internet nowadays to do anything that slightly harms anything, mm. especially flies. Like, so uh, yeah, that one got me a lot of hate mail. I, I let really? the flies go and they didn't die. And I let them all go. There was like five of them and I fed them in a cup for like weeks before. I'm like, these are the best treated flies in the world. And I'm getting death that, threats like yeah harm i'm harming flies like that's some first class preparation actually 
and, and, yeah, and you go, I, know. I can't believe but yeah, you that got one emails. was awesome to see the flies <laughs> hopping around in there. The, <laughs> what's interesting about it is it's interesting how they expected to fly. They uh, they push off, and so you see them jump up in the air, but they can't fly, and then they just fall back down. So yeah. I don't know if it was their wings hitting the ground or they actually push off with their legs first, but you'll notice they like hop up. They look like uh, ticks or something yeah. hopping. Yeah, so that one was cool. Um, so Jack, we'll talk a bit about your uh, PhD actually. So it's in chemi- chemical engineering, isn't it? Um, and yeah. you focused on bio biofuels. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So honestly, how close are we to cracking that? Because I mean, I I, I like. <laughs> I'm thinking of Back to the Future 2 with the where he gets all the rubbish and he starts putting it in the car and he's like using it as fuel. I mean, how close are we to that, honestly? Yeah, it, I mean, so it's hard. It's funny because I, you know, I worked in it for four years. It, I, yeah. I did syngas fermentation. So that's basically, if you don't know what syngas is, it's hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and, and CO2. Right. And we use bacteria that converts that into ethanol and butanol. So basically the they're taking this gas and you can get syn gas from burning trash, uh, partially burning trash. You don't want to fully burn it or else it just turns into water and CO2. And so then the bacteria can turn it into a liquid fuel. And that's what we we need is liquid fuel to replace, you know, gasoline and cars. Yeah. But the thing is, it's just really hard to do. It's, um, you have to dissolve these gases into a liquid so the bacteria can eat it in there. And that's the hard part. And that's what I focus my research on mostly is mass transfer rates of transferring this gas to dissolve into the liquid quickly um, so that they can use it quickly. And, and, you know, it works. And there's like, when I finished my PhD, there was one company that did it actually commercially. And it was supposed to be the big thing in the future. And it still is happening now, but it never really took off. And I think it's just because, um, excuse me, because there's, it's hard to do and there's not a huge, it costs so much. So that's the thing with, with a lot of alternative fuels is until they're cost effective, it's just not going to compete with oil ever. Money drives everything no matter what. And so, so until it becomes cost effective, no one's going to invest in syngas fermentation until it makes them some money. And so. That's the hard thing. And I think what I learned with all the biofuel stuff is that there's not going to be one thing that replaces oil. There, it's going to be, it's, it has to be a bunch of things all together, yeah. working together. And so th- there's not, uh, actually, besides, I'll put, nu- I'm a, a nuclear fan. <laughs> besides nuclear, <laughs> there's not going to be one thing yeah. that could replace oil. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I mean, that's uh, just what you're saying there about the cost. That's because uh, Katz and I obviously teach GCSE here in the UK that when it, whenever biofuels come up, comes up, you say, yep, advantages and disadvantages always go with the cost for the disadvantage. That's a mark straight away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Standard response. Yeah. Cost, bang, everything. Yeah. Not cost efficient. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of, I mean, it's depressing thinking that way, but that's really how it works. And yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so you're also writing a couple of books. Or yeah, yeah. How's um, that? How's that going? Well, so I've written one with my wife. That's kind of an experiment book. Not kind of. It is an experiment book where I just based it on the experiments that I've done on my channel that okay. I thought were fun and that people could do at home. Oh, cool. And, so it's like a kind of ex- how to do it sort of thing. Yeah, I yeah. just kind of explain more about the experiment and. To show specifically the materials you need because sometimes I kind of gloss over that in my on my YouTube channel. Yeah, like my YouTube videos aren't necessarily here's how you do this. It's, no, kind it's of all about the action. The, yeah, the full thing. Yeah, and so um, the other one is I don't really have a title for it yet. I call it Quantum Faith, but I'm a Christian and I have a strong faith in God. Okay, but I'm also a scientist. Yeah, and it's always bugged me how a lot of people have to compartmentalize the two. It's like you're, you have your faith and then you have your religion. Don't bring them up together. They don't really go together. So how do you find, how do you find that on YouTube? Does that come up much on YouTube? Yeah. So I haven't, it's not really part of YouTube. I've I've just, um, I've been writing it on the side uh, and basing it on a lot of other books I've read on quantum theory just uh, the main goal of the book is how 
to, to kind of show people who don't believe in God that really there's not really any proof you can have either way um, for or against a belief in God. It always comes down to faith either way. Yeah, sure. In, some, in something that's not part of our physical world. And I talk about um, a lot of quantum mechanics in it because um, uh, quantum mechanics gets a little um, w- weird yeah. <laughs> in, term, in terms of how things are not based on physicality, uh, like the wave function and everything. And I kind of talk about that in the book, okay. how that necessarily it's almost like there's this non-physical real reality that exists outside of our physical world. Yeah. And the physical world is kind of the... The, the fake thing happening it's kind of it's interesting to to think about it yeah i've, um, I've been doing some research yeah. on a on a guest we've got coming up actually in the in the next couple of weeks who's an expert on quantum uh on quantum mechanics and uh-huh. uh, the research is in qu- quantum biology and i'd oh, never yeah. he- i'd never really heard of it before but it's a really interesting concept have you heard of that cats the quantum biology i'm sure you have I watched a TED talk on it, and I um, I'm going to kick myself for not remembering who the guy was, but there is a good TED talk on quantum biology, and it was above my head, well above my head. Like, oh, yeah, absolutely. But, um, I found it fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So if anyone can Google that and find it, it's um, it was really really good. Yeah, yeah, I'd be interested in that because, I mean, I kind of touch on that in the book I'm writing is um, really a kind of getting deep down into even human thoughts and human free will yeah is um very based on quantum mechanics um specifically even on um how th- thoughts or um synapses synapses even occur in the brain has to do with the specific voltage level that's reached and that depends ultimately on the location of an electron in a in a hex, hexagonal ring there on what side it ends up being on when the synapse occurs yeah you know basically when the wave function collapses of that electron so it's interesting that of course we're based on quantum mechanics because we're made of <laughs> atoms that are based yeah. on quantum mechanics so so we would expect that but it's really interesting how how it ties into the 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 concept of free will why do, why do we feel like we're different than a chair even though we're made of the same things, yeah. like why do we, why, why is there this feeling of being, yeah, and, versus not? And you, and you, you, uh, you discuss this in the book, yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes deep. Cool. <laughs> no, that sounds good. It's, and you not, fin- not you're not finished that one yet. <laughs> no, yeah, that that was basically it. It's just, um, it's a, it's a deep thinking book. Yeah. I, um, it's a religious book in in the terms of that, um. I just want to, I want to show people who are religious that you can be religious and scientific yeah. as, as long as you kind of accept certain rules of both, um, that, that they can mix like, like not religious in the, in the sense that you're just like a scientific fact denier, but you're, you're kind of in the search for an ultimate truth yeah. and not just compartmentalizing different truths that you find. Yeah, that's a really... And I think that's important. Absolutely. It's quite a refreshing take as well. Don't you think, Kat's like, from what we've experienced on YouTube, mm-hmm. in terms of what in terms of the, the stuff that we look at, we don't often see that sort of an opinion, do we? No, I think it's, uh, I think it's, it's refreshing. I think a lot of people uh, will benefit, it's certainly in the circles we move in, a lot of people benefit from just... just you know, having to think about that and yeah. reflecting on it for a few minutes. It's, Absolutely. Um, yeah, certainly uh, something I agree with. Well, yeah, it, it's definitely not the, the, oh, I mean, actually the further you get into the, the physical sciences, you'll find the more <laughs> religious people end up being because ultimately you find there's some things that you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, yeah. How is, that how is this actually yeah. working? Yeah. And so it, I, I feel like that's a little, people who are in the higher sciences meaning like you know in biologies and stuff where you're not getting deep down into the fundamentals of the fundamental sciences like physics and i I guess i include chemistry to that but really physics yeah um that you don't get to like get down to the roots of everything Mm. so it's easy to gloss over the unknown things that we don't know yet yeah yeah that's very interesting um, so, I mean, you know, you know what me and Kat, well, you know what I do, you know, Kat does the same thing. We both spend our time on YouTube trying to debunk conspiracy theories using science. Um, yeah. you, we had a chat before, and, you, and like we said, you do loads of stuff with vacuums. Um, and you said that you get a lot of flat earthers coming on to those particular videos and, and, and 
talking about the vacuums. Is that right? How, what's your experience yeah. of them? Yeah. Oh boy. Flat earthers. So I didn't know about this. I thought, so before I started doing vacuum chamber stuff, when yeah. someone mentioned a flat earther, I thought it was a joke. Like, I, like, oh yeah, you know, people say they think the earth is flat. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Like they're <laughs> trolling you or whatever. Yep. But then I'm like, wait, there really is people. And they're like really adamant about it. Oh, they're serious. And, yeah. and like really in your face about it. <laughs> and it's kind of scary sometimes. And so I actually admire slash pity what you're doing because i've gotten into conversations with flat earthers <laughs> oh yeah. and after a, a after a few months of it of like having these long conversations and back and forth comments i'm like this is just a waste of time after a while like they just are on another level of understanding that you can't even reason with and so yeah i <laughs> a strength a few months that's strength i can't i can't put it down yeah, yet <laughs> I've had too many conversations with friends and family um, venting about flat earthers. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, my wife had to convince me. She's like, stop responding yeah. to people. Do not respond to any of the comments that mention anything about that. And I'm like, okay, I just have to let it go. So it's what, just so annoying that yeah. you can easily answerable things like it, a simple experiment that they could do that proves mm. me wrong. And it's just like, oh, I just well, want to say this to you. <laughs> I showed a flat earther your video once, uh, a flat earther that said rockets couldn't work in space because uh, they need uh, to push off. And I showed them your video where you had the, the can of soda in the vacuum and it popped. Doesn't and, help. You know, Doesn't and you help. slowed it right down. <laughs> and, the, and, it, and you could see the moment. And the response was, honestly, the response was, well, how did you not know the minute that that can yeah, open that all the gas response. inside the can didn't <laughs> yeah. fill the vacuum chamber and they could push off it? Like, oh, I can tell you every response that they have to any experiment you could do it's just so funny it's just <laughs> but it doesn't it doesn't help like you answer that question well here's how we know it couldn't instantly come out and then they'll just have another thing and another thing and another thing and it just goes down like i've come down like you get down to a certain level where you're like they don't even believe in atomic theory anymore and i'm like what well, we, how do we even get on some level of agreement of anything? Yeah. Do you agree we exist? Am yeah. I a person? <laughs> I don't, and half of them are the blooming matrix believers, so don't even go there. <laughs> Simulation theory, that's what they... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, they are, they are crazy, and, we, and we've, we've been doing it about three years now, Katz and I. Um, I mean, I feel bad. I, 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 we, right now, like, we're lumping them all into one thing, but yeah. I feel like there's some people who really don't have a good scientific understanding that get caught Completely. up into it and think Completely. it's like an option. Yep. Like, the, oh, this is something. And I want to, those are the people that are good to weed out and be like, no, wait, wait, really? Like, don't go down that. That's the dumbest thing you could possibly think. Don't, yeah. don't that, go That don't is go exactly that what path. happens. Exactly what happens. Cats actually pulled one back, one of those types of people. <laughs> it's like a um, conversion. Yeah. yeah Talk yeah. about <laughs> religion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Take them from the dark side. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, I, when Katz first started on YouTube, he uh, had a guy go at these guys called Peter and Peter. I seem to bring this up all the time, Katz, this one. Um, it's and, amazing, though, and isn't they, it, they, what they said. Yeah, they claim that water does not consist of hydrogen and oxygen. They said it was yeah. just an element in its own right. Have you heard of that one before? Um, I don't know if I've heard of that. I've heard a lot of water ones. Yeah. Water seems to be a thing i don't know why what, what about this magical magical element what about water, water <laughs> is sentient have you heard that one water is what water is sentient have you heard that one <laughs> well, Who, who's that water has memory and that's it, it yeah. remembers yeah. what's done to it before <laughs> and like yeah stuff like that or i'm like you, you know we need water i get it it's important but it's not it's not magic <laughs> <laughs> that, i mean that one in particular what, what other stuff do they do peter and pete they came out of all sorts didn't they Oh, clouds are made of salt. Um, yeah. the, the, my two favorite they ever did was was they said oxygen doesn't exist in one video. And then in another video, they said you can make oxygen using a bicycle pump. So I have no <laughs> idea like, which, which of those, uh, well, how they even compete. It's with hard. Them. Yeah, it's just hard because so they say these outlandish things that you can prove wrong, but it just, it takes so much effort and oh, time yeah. and like, nice. So I'm like, you could say these crazy things, say all squirrels are actually robots and like, okay, go prove that wrong. So someone ha would have to go out there and just like do this research and just like 
catch a squirrel, then they're dissecting it, and then you come up with another thing. We'll be like, well, those are actually robot parts. And like, you can just say <laughs> crazy things. Yeah. That ultimately, uh, ultimately, you're just like, I don't know. You can just keep going down this craziness, or actually come back to reality. And yeah, they uh, always, they always have a, they always have that extra level, don't they? There's always an extra yeah. level to go to, and and no matter what you say, there always. And you're right about I that. Found, go on. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. I was going to say you're right about them. Um, there be we can't lump them all together because there are what we what cats and I would refer to as kind of like the heads of the flat earth, where they talk all their on their channels about the they talk about science and they talk they go through things at length, and then there's people that watch them religiously and mm. repeat it over and yeah. over and over, and they're the ones that we that we're trying to we're trying to get at because the ones that are publishing on their YouTube channels. I don't think yeah. they're they're possible cats. I don't think we say they're they're, they're not going to turn for anything. They're, they're not interested, and um, I'm yeah. not, like we've said before, I'm not sure how genuine a lot of them are. They get a lot of attention, they earn a lot of money from it, and yeah. um, you know it's 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 pretty sad. I think YouTube would be nice if they clamp down a little bit harder on on channels like that. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's like you're talking about the the channels that propagate um, flat Earth uh, theories if you can call it that yeah um mm. is they some of them they actually like they'll watch my videos like i with a youtube channel you kind of get to know people that comment on a lot of videos so you can kind of see them you kind of know who shows up more even when i'm getting a lot of comments i can be like oh this person comments a lot i know who they yeah. i know who they are meaning i've seen their profile and stuff on a lot of my videos but like some of them i've noticed i'm like wait they're sounding weird. Are they a flat earther? I'm like, they've been watching my science videos and somehow they still, they are, uh, they think the earth is flat. It's just surprising where some of them will actually have a pretty good scientific understanding. Yeah. But then when it comes down to the roots of it, they, there's some non, they don't grasp certain things mm. or they have some completely different world theory yeah. that doesn't mesh. And so it's hard because they can ex they can on a, on a high level explain stuff. Um, I'm, I'm good enough now where I can catch it. Usually I can pick it off. Like it within a, a conversation, I can be like, I, this person probably thinks the earth is yeah. flat just based on kind of the weirdness of how they're saying certain things. Yeah. But I feel bad for people who aren't really into science that they won't, they can't pick it up. And so they start believe they're like, Oh, this guy's smart. He knows what he's talking about. And then Absolutely. they'll say just something that's completely off the mark. And they're like, they'll just believe it. Cause they've heard them say a bunch of other things that are actually are true. Yeah. It's kind of like they mix It's a, it's an artwork of mixing a lot of truth with a little bit of lies and that's where it, it's hard to disagree uh, for other people to find um, faults in it because they yeah. don't know where those um, untruth in truths are. That's a good way of putting yeah. it. A good way of putting it. So mixing a lot of truth with, with a with a few lies. I mean, mm -hmm. cats and I know many people that do that. Um, yeah. I uh, I recently saw a poll that states that one in five Americans believe that the COVID pandemic is a depopulation plan orchestrated by the UN. How how can that gain traction? I mean, we're talking about the people that, that propagate it, but how can that one genuinely get followers? It's just the whole. I mean, it's a, people thrive on um, non understanding. So whenever there's something that kind of goes above the general level of scientific understanding of the average person that's where it, it's easy to spread lies. And so yeah. people just, people just find that path and they're like, Oh, people don't understand the certain level. So here's how we'll explain it away. And all it takes is one person who has some, something behind their name where they're a smart person. And that's where it just can take off because they're like, Oh, this person said it. Yeah. And so, I mean, I like to, I, I mean, you mentioned I had a PhD, but I, I honestly try to never even mention it to any conversation I have with anybody who's arguing with me in a comment section or wh whether they've sent me a personal message. They say, I think you're wrong in this. I never try to name drop and be like, well, I have my yeah. PhD in chemical engineering and I think this. I, I will never even mention it. Even even when they start insulting me, be like, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Like I never try to be like, I say, well, if it sounds like I don't know what I'm talking about, maybe my argument's not good enough. Yeah. Like, so I need to like really try to help them understand. Yeah. Whereas uh, flat earthers or not flat earthers, <laughs> but just people who spread lies in general, 
they use like this doctor said this. So it's yeah. just only the title. That's all they have. But the logic isn't there at all. Whereas I try to do the opposite is use real logic, real experiments. You, who cares what your degree is in? Yeah. You can, you can think that, well, think uh, about this and solve it for yourself. A lot of those people mm-hmm. don't think that the, the degrees are worth the paper they're written on. So, I mean, I don't know why <laughs> they, true. I don't know why <laughs> they cite these doctors, you know, that they'll, they'll, they'll <laughs> cite a doctor about something with COVID and then they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll it depends on what side yeah, of the doctor is exactly. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, if it, yeah, if they're for that, whatever they're trying to prove, then they're all yeah. for doctors. But if not, they're in, they're in the whole scam yeah, along with NASA yeah, and everything. Exactly. Yeah. NASA apparently is the oh NASA NASA is the king of all space <laughs> agencies. Do you yeah. know that? You know, there's How no other space NASA- agencies. <laughs> So answer me this right now. How much is NASA paying us to do this podcast? Uh, <laughs> well, we'll, we'll cut that out. That's what they hey, want to know. We'll cut that out, guys. Are, we'll cut that out. How much are they paying you? <laughs> <laughs> I, genuinely, I've lost count the amount of times I've had that, that comment yeah. about being paid for to do it. I wish NASA paid me oh, for yeah. my yeah. vacuum experiments. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I, I, like... The amount, the amount of times I've bigged them up is unbelievable. So I, should, I, am, I am owed <laughs> something, to be fair. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to play the the greatest game show that has ever... Well, it's not that good, but, uh, you know, it's Guess the Conspiracy. So what we do is Katz and I have both... Uh, so I need, to, I need to clarify this a bit. So last week we did it, and someone made a couple of comments. So the two conspiracies that Katz and I have created are, are conspiracy theories that don't exist that no one believes. The one that is okay. real... Is a real conspiracy theory that people believe, not that it's real as in true. So uh, I just wanted to clarify. So <laughs> yeah, good so point the, there. So there's one, <laughs> there's one that is real that people believe, and there's two that Katz and I have constructed. And your job is to try and figure out which one is the real conspiracy people that people believe. Okay. okay. So here we go. Hang so on. This is all me. I'm just doing this, right? I'm, no one because you guys know the answers. We know right? the answers. Yeah. Hang on. Okay. I keep forgetting about my catchy jingle for this. Two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay Beautiful. here, here we go awesome right number one oxygen is a made-up concept that was created to allow companies to sell and therefore profit from thin air <laughs> that's conspiracy number one uh okay. num- number two mount rushmore is made from nothing but heavy paper that's conspiracy number two and number three, postage stamps have been laced with a chemical that, when licked, makes people more susceptible to subliminal, subliminal advertising. There's your three conspiracies. Mm. I would say the Mount Rushmore one. Is real? Is the fake one. Is the fake one. Okay, so which one yeah. do you say is real out of the other two? Oh, wait, how many is it? There's, there's, there's multiple. There's, oh, is there only one there's real There's only one? one that's genuinely people believe. The other two oh, are completely wow, okay. fabricated by cats and I. So the first one was the oxygen. I'm going to say the stamps one then. Is the real one? Is, is the, No. Okay. The real one is the oxygen one. Okay. And the other two are made up by me and Katz. The other two are made okay. up. Okay. We've done it, Katz. We've fooled someone. Yes. Really? Finally yes. <laughs> yes. Last week. Come Doctor, on. I could get someone to believe that oxygen You probably one, could, yeah. Sure. Dr. <laughs> Becky. Dr. Becky got it right last week. Um, so... Uh, oxygen is made up is a made up concept that was created to allow companies to sell and therefore profit from net, from thin air. That was something I made up about a year and a half ago. Me and Katz did like a spoof video on it. Um, oh, as, yeah. Do you remember that, Katz? Uh, yeah, about remember, yeah. about how flat Earth is a think and act, and we used oxygen as an example. Well, that's um, awesome. Katz made up the one about the postage stamps being laced with chemicals that went licked. Okay. The Mount Rushmore one. There are people that genuinely <laughs> think that Mount, okay. Mount Rushmore is made from heavy paper. So I chose that one that I thought might be fake because I'm like, usually there's some reason behind it. Like, but I'm like, what could be the reason behind the well, Mount the, Rushmore? The like, reason for this. It's made out of paper. Or yeah. not. <laughs> they, they literally got some rock from Mount, Mount Rushmore and, and bashed it and a bit came off. So therefore it was heavy paper. Mm, paper, so, of course. Yeah, you know, that's it. We've done it, cats. It's one all. It's one all. We're back in. Smashed it. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, they're hard because, because the it's like, Choosing between three nonsensical sentences and which one is tough. <laughs> like, it is tough. <laughs> so, yeah, we had to up our game from last week because uh, <laughs> Dr. Becky found us out. Anyway, James, thank we're you very much now. for joining us. Um, really, really appreciate you uh, coming along. Your, your channel is fantastic. Everyone listening, it's Action Lab on YouTube. Please, don't, please do go and check it out. Um, and the book you've got released, what's that? the title of that one again? 
It's called Extreme Garage Science. Extreme. On, it's on Amazon. You can find it. Brilliant. We'll check that out. We'll put some links as well in the description for that. Uh, but anyway, that's us. Uh, next week, we have got uh, Amy from Vintage Space. Uh, do you know her, uh, James? Vintage Space. Yeah, it's, it's a YouTube channel. It's a, mm. a, a lady called Amy. She's literally obsessed with space flight. I'm not sure I do. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll check her check out. Check it out. She's great. Yeah. But anyway, she's next week. So catch your... Are you there for that one? with amy i think i am yeah Yeah. i think i am perfect stuff uh but anyway that's it for now thank you very much everyone for listening and we'll see you all next time goodbye bye-bye